Hi everyone, welcome to the QOps channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to be doing our last scenario. We're still going to finalize, we're going to still do Circle CI, create the Circle CI pipeline. We're going to do a little bit of Gradle tasks in order to use on Circle CI as well. But uh, scenario wise, this is going to be the last scenario of our, uh, of our tests. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of the next videos. Uh, and I'm going to be posting the links for all the previous videos because it's very important for you to understand what's happening. Uh, if you land on this video by itself, it might, it might not make sense for you. Some of the stuff also, uh, you, you might not know why we did this way or that way. So it's very important for you to watch since the beginning so you can understand how we got here. So uh, we have these, uh, we already have the, the Swagger store here. And what we have is we have, we're going to be doing using the, the store, the area of the store to actually create an order. Um, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a post to the order and it's going to create an order. And we also, and afterwards we're going to use the ID that was retrieved here by the ID. And we're going to get that order. Of course, we also need to create some, some pets, right? Because in order to do an order, you need to send the pet ID. So we need to create the pet as well. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, so last video, we created a, a builder from scratch and we're going to use that feature. I created this store feature here with a scenario that is, was just necessary for us to have an executable. Uh, so I have this feature uh, and I have this scenario called client creates an order. Uh, given I have a pet available, when I order that pet, then the order is approved. So what I need to do is I'm going to start creating these uh, step definitions. I already have the store step definition and I'm going to delete this one because this is from the previous video that we created the, the, the builder from scratch. I'm going to be posting the links here for you to uh, watch how we did that. So I need to create this is going to be a word. And I'm going to receive this word as a status, right? So it's already mapped here. So now what I need to do, I need to create my pet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want a pet builder. I'm going to change the idea of the pet to something big, maybe 300, 333. And I'm going to build. So I'm going to break this so it's a little bit more uh, uh, readable. And now I can create the pet. So I need to use my 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 pet API right to create the pet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pet API here. I need to create the attribute the sorry the the class, the object, sorry, pet API. And I'm going to create the object on the constructor, uh, not this one, the construct, the constructor. Very good. So it's going to be pet API. It's a new pet API. So now I can do pet API, create. Oh, I don't have the create. So let's create that. So in order for me to create the pet, I need to, to do it public, void create pet. And I receive the pet as an object, right? When I create a pet, I receive the ID of that pet. So when I create a pet, when I create a pet, I receive the ID of that pet. So I need to use that ID to, to I need to use that ID afterwards. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to 
deserialize this, they return into a object. So this I need to return a path. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say return a given. Given what? Given I have a, a body and the body content is a path. When I do, when I do a post to where, it's create path in the point and it's v3 slash path. So I do this and this uh, post to this create. And then I expect the status code to be 200. And I extract the body. I want the return body of the response. And I say that I want this body as a pet. This is a little, a little bit different than what we did here. Uh, here. But this I was mapping to a list of pet. Here is only one pet. Therefore, I don't need the whole this whole code here. Just a simple one. So now I can create my pet. So now I can come here and I can say create pet and pet. But this is going to be used in the next step. Right, so this, whatever path we are creating here is going to be used here. So I need to create a class instance, uh, sorry, a class variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, expect, expected path. So now this is my expected path. Great. When I order that path, the path that we created, right? Sorry, not here. Needs to be on the start step definition. Oh, I forgot the status, right? When you create a status, when you create a pet, we, we want a pet with a specific status. So I need to say here that I want a pet with certain ID and certain status. Our builder allows us to do that. So now I want to order that pet. So I need to create my, my store API now, right? So I can come here to, uh, I need to create first the order and then I create, uh, I, I do the order. There's one thing that I did wrong last video was that when I mapped the domain of the order, I mapped to the name of store. I got confused probably, I can't remember. Uh, so here is name store, but actually we are creating an order. So instead of naming the domain store, I should have named order, but this is no problem, right? Here is the domain, here is store, but this is related to an order. So I'm going to rename this shift F6, and I'm going to call it order. And I'm also going to rename this shift F6 as well, and I'm going to call order builder. Right, awesome. So you see that everything already changed. Uh, so what I can do now is I can create my order. I can come here and I can say order, order is a new order. This is going to be builder. A little bit different than this builder here because this builder is, the pet builder is using Lombok. That's why we use this way. This one we created ourselves. So this is why we are we have another class called Water Builder, right? And again, I'm going to be posting the links, the link for this video, so you can watch how we did this. So now I can say which pet ID I want, and I'm also going to change the ID of the order. Right? So I can do a enter here, and I'm going to say with with ID, and I'm going to say, I don't know, 888, with pet ID, so this needs to be the same pet ID that we created already, so expected pet, pet ID, get ID, and I'm going to do build, so it's going to build that order for me. Now I need to do that order, so in order to do that order, I need to create a new class, I'm going to call it order API. Sorry, this is a store. So now 
the domain is a, a the domain of the order, but the API is the store because now I can do inventory, I can do order, right? So store. I need to create the endpoint of, of the whole thing here, right? Uh, store order. Right? Um, so what I'm going to do is private static final mean create order endpoint. And this is slash v3 slash store slash order. Right. So what else I need to create the create the, the method, right? So when I do create order and I execute my create order, it also is going to return the data here, right? The the body of the response. And I need to use this because I'm going to use these to do my assertions, right? So private. Now I'm going to return the whole object. So this is sorry, public order. This is going to return an order. Create order. And this is going to receive an order to be created. Right? And the code that we're going to be using here is really similar to this one. So let me just copy and paste it here. Let me do the correct identification. Cool. This is going to be create order endpoint. This is going to be order. And this also needs to be order because this is not a pet. Right. So on my start step definition, I can now create this order. I can, I need to also create, instantiate here the API, order API, order API, order API is a new order API. Sorry, this is not order, get confused. Store API. Is a new store API. This is store API, and this is store API. So my store API is going to create an order, and I'm going to give it. And I'm going to send the order that we just created in our builder. But this also needs to receive an order as well, right? To to be used in next method in the following method. So this is going to be order expected order so now i can say expected order not pet but order awesome. next up i can do what i need to come here in my store and i can say then the order is approved I right, to check if the order is approved now i need to do I get on the order ID, right? So what I need to do, I need to, in our store API, I need to do now a get. So it's going to be get order endpoint and slash ID, right? So here I'm going to do public. Instead of returning the order, I'm going to return the response, get order, receiving a ID. So I'm going to say return given pass param and on the pass param is the parameter of the URL ID and the, the value is going to be ID because this is on the my method uh, argument when I do a what when I do a get to the get order endpoint. And this is what I want to return. I do not want to return a 
um, the object order because when you do an order and you have the object, you have data that was generated by the system, which is this one are generated by the system. You're not going to create the exactly same one. This one complete if the order was completed or not. What is uh, uh, if it's false, complete false or not? So the order was not finalized yet, so it's not going to be completed. The order can be approved, and you can check this. But this one, it might be a little bit hard, especially this one, right? The timestamp. So if you try to match an object with an object, it's going to fail. Probably you're going to have to treat the object, remove this field, do something, which I don't think is worth. Right? We can use Groovy collections to we can use RefreshSure to do that. So now I'm going to say response, actual order response is going to um, store API, but get order. And what's the order that you're going to get? Is the order that we created expected order get id now i can do actual order response dot then i'm going to break it here and i can do body so i want to check the body of this right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say i want to check the id the ID of my order, the ID of my order needs to be is, I need to import this, is core matcher is, this is the expected order get ID, right? I'm going to break here and break here. The other one that I want is pet ID. I need to make sure that the pet that was ordered was the same pet that I created. So the pet ID expected pet dot, I can use expected order dot get pet ID, or I could use expected pet get pet, get ID, right? Either way. Uh, so let me use the expected pet so we can double check everything. The next one is quantity. I want to make sure that the, the quantity was actually the quantity that I ordered. I, I, I ordered one and uh, I, I ordered one and it was order 10, right? That cannot happen. So my expected or I want the to be the expected one that I created get quantity. And finally, I want the status status of this needs to be approved. Right? I'm not saying that this is a variable. Uh, I'm just using this a if you, in, in this case, if you wanted a new one, a new scenario, uh, and if you wanted a different status, you'd have to create a new uh, step definition. I'm going to come here to the store and I'm going to execute this. Great, it worked. Did it really work? Well, let's try it out. So let me remove the O. Let me remove the, let me change the pet ID. The pet ID, I'm going to say 90 and rerun. So I got a few errors. So the, the actual pet ID was 333 uh, and I was expecting 90. And the actual status was approved, but I was expecting without the O. So it looks like it's working. So let me rerun so our last execution is a successful one. So well, Rafael, our, our contract has more data. Why it's so simple? Because we are using our builders. So our builder has data here. Whatever we did not set manually here is going to be used the data, the default data. 
So this is the builder that we created. The builder from Lombok is going to be using this default here. So whatever we did not set here is going to be using the default uh, value of that. Uh, of that. So that's the beauty of builder, uh, and, and it could be even simpler if I did not care of changing any of the data, right? So one thing that is important for us to do is to run every test, right? And when we run every test, we're going to see that there are some failures, right? There are some tests that we we were asserting, this is the Portuguese one, but the English one we were asserting for seven pets and we got 11. Why is that? Because we have been adding pets in other, from other tests. So it's very important for that, that those tests that create something, they also delete that something, right? And we did not do that. So we're going to see failures. And your, your, your tests is going to be running uh, uh, all the time. There is no specific order for those tests to be running. So you need to make sure that whoever created the data cleaned that up. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. Thank you for watching. This is what basically what I wanted to show you. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of the next videos. If you like it, give the thumbs up. And it's really important that you do. So that's how the channel can keep growing. And I'll see you next video.